And if you put you in water, you start to grow like the sprout stuff and start to look like a weird kind of Sputnik thing. Gross. Welcome to Good Mythical More. <laughs> yeah. That's... For a second, I forgot about Good Mythical More. Don't we entirely. do a show called Good Mythical I was More? Like, I was like, I was Gross. Like, you know what face I make when I've forgotten everything. So, what, well, Link? You, I just you didn't forget fight. that science, man. You remembered all that science. I'm a good guesser, man. It was good guessing. You were, you were mad because your questions were harder. But how am I supposed to know how hard your questions are going to be? You went easy on me. I went a little harder. It's Eddie's on me. fault, man. <laughs> um. <laughs> okay. But so, but I'm smarter than you. Just live with it. Mm. Okay. Is that why you're bothered? No, I'm just you don't mad want that people I asked to ask you a question about Great Barrier Reef, and one of the questions, one of the answers was Great Coral Reef. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you told me I was wrong, I believed you. <laughs> Which yeah, I thought you thought I knew I was joking. I mean, I've I've been wrong so much by accident that uh, I'm not going to put it past myself. Um, so here's what we did uh, in creating the uh, Good Mythical Morning Book Club. We've created a way for us to have a shared experience around an audio book on Audible.com/gmm. Uh, thanks for, hey, it's not too late to, to, to join in with the next book, which right. you've already picked out. But um, this episode, this little session here is to discuss it. Because um, it, it was a, I, I know. It was a heady. A lot of people probably, and actually, I'll say this, one of the reasons that we're doing the Princess Bride book this time around is I'm sure that there were some of you who were like, I kind of got bored with that uh, because it was just super, super scientific. I really enjoyed it, but it was a kind of thing that I had to like do the the, the backup button a couple of times to be like, hold on, where where am I? At? Where is he at on this? Because he would kind of go into well, this. Everything built to the next thing. Yeah. And uh, Will Wheaton did an amazing job uh, of uh, reading it. I had perfect tone, but it. it yeah. I mean, this there's a relentlessness. If you to if the, you didn't really really like the scientific extrapolation that happened with every single question, then you may be like, ah, are you guys going to do that again? So no, we're going to change it up and we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, but I'm going to to jog our memory. I'll just read through the table of contents, and you're much better at retaining information as of this I nature. have demonstrated on the game today. So, um, like the I'm going to skip to machine gun jetpack. I do remember that one because it. it there is a, it is possible to fire machine guns downward in order to propel yourself. And I really was fascinated about those, like those Russian machine guns that they put on planes that if they fire them from the plane, that the plane would, it would, it would stop flying. It would stop flying. And it, it was because the kickback. This is like a jet that's flying at a very uh, high speed. That's crazy. Um, soulmates. That was an early one. I found that one to be incredibly interesting because the you know the, there is his whole thing was from a scientific perspective, not getting into like a philosophical or discussion of destiny or fate, but just from a scientific perspective exclusively. If you did it, have a soulmate, is it possible to find them? To find your soulmate. So if every single person is paired with someone else on the planet, and he just went through this, it was it was a, a statistics game, like the chances. Basically, right, what right. would happen is if we if you're all just roaming had, around. Yeah, if we all had to end up meeting our soulmate, and the way we had to do it was just through the process of everyday life, you would never meet your soulmate because it's just you, the vast majority of people on the planet you never come in contact with. But it was cool how he talked about how society would start to retool itself in order to meet your soulmate, facilitate making eye contact with your soulmate. Because like assuming yeah. you would. Like a definition of soulmate is that, but his definition would be you would know him when you saw him. Right. And so you ha just had to define society. Creating services for, where you would run people in front of each other constantly. all day so that they would eventually run into their soulmate. And even then, you probably wouldn't find your soulmate. Or, or if you did speak the same language. Like if them. you had every single person on earth was on a conveyor belt in front of you and they were all going by making eye contact with you, if you sat there for the rest of your life, you would never find your soulmate. But th this is why science fiction movies exist because it's fun to think about the moment of meeting your Potential. soulmate in that instance. You know, the yeah. like, oh, Michelle and Randy, they met each other, they actually found each other. Isn't that amazing? Like, I'd wanna see that in movie form and I'd want it to be 
Will Smith, and uh, I don't care who else it is, as long as it's Will Smith. <laughs> as long as it's Will Smith movie, I, I, I know love it's seeing be Will good. Smith connect with his soulmate, man. If he's he's just like going throughout the whole earth, looking for on conveyor belts, man. That's a good movie. It's like After Earth. It's like a fifty-nine movie. hour movie. Did you watch After Earth? I got stuck on that one time on a. Uh, it was on television. And um, it, that movie, I'd rather have people go in front of me on a conveyor belt than watch After Earth. I'll tell you a that. mole of moles. This is when oh. they said, uh, if you ha a mole is a measure of unit, which I learned about in in chemistry one hundred and one. I no longer remember and it's what a it lot. is, and it's a lot, a whole lot. But it's if you had that power. many, if you had a mole of moles, like shrews, it would be a planet of moles that were just the, they, they had their own gravity. Own gravity. <laughs> it's, and, and they last for like thousands of years. And he talked about how this they would gelatinous ba ball of moles. It was starting to get really hot on the inside, right? Yeah, because of all the friction being created. Is it the friction or the decomposition? Both. I don't remember that. Well, because that one got gross. It was cool. Um, let's see. Steak drop. You remember that? No. If you drop a steak, oh, if, can you cook it? Yeah. Would it cook in the atmosphere? And the answer is, the no. atmosphere is at most. It may sear it a little bit. In the but it's good. Case, but case, but when it hits, it's still going to be frozen. It's going to be raw on the inside. Uh, or frozen. Uh, but I did learn the the origin of what's it called when you when you cook a steak like where the steel mill workers would cook their steaks. It was a, like a urban legend on the um, on the hot metal as it came out. So they would just slap a steak on it, and it would it would be like rare, uncooked in the middle, and then it would be seared on the outside. And they call that like Philadelphia or Pittsburgh. Or Pittsburgh, Pits, Pittsburgh steel. Yeah, that makes sense. Pittsburgh. You don't remember that part. You, I do. Pittsburgh, you, that's why I said Pittsburgh. Oh. Um, I remember Lincoln and I were on a, we were, we were on our four by four trip and we were listening to some of this and he got into it, uh, cause Locke has gotten him into the, um, the speed bump chapter, he was really into it cause Locke has gotten him into like fast cars and stuff like that. Fast cars. He knows about Lamborghinis and McLarens and all this stuff. But the question was how fast would you have to go over a speed bump to kill you? I can't. Well, it it was. Uh, I can't remember what the speed was, but that's the thing. I couldn't remember the speed either. But uh, you shouldn't try it. I do it remember was, that. Yeah. The the drain the oceans one where he had a thing where if you put a. I think how, how big was that thing? It was like a ten foot wide drain, like a hole at the bottom, hole in of the bottom the, of the ocean, of the lowest point in the ocean, and you just started draining all the oceans, like what? And it, and, and it imagine, was all coming out at Mars, the surface of Mars. Yeah, like what would happen on Earth, and then what would happen on Mars? Yeah, and how long it would take the oceans to go down on Earth was fascinating to me. Like even with a ten foot hole or whatever that thing was, mm -hmm. how, how long it would take before we began to really notice it? That's how big the ocean is. But then. But he said like eventually an, it would be a big problem. It would take a while, but the force of suction at the hole, like if there was an aircraft carrier there, it would just like like fold it on itself and suck, suck it, it right through. through. Suck it right through. Suck it right down, man. Uh, that's drain the oceans. Um, no more DNA. That was cool because he started talking about those mushrooms that kill your DNA, and there's a there's a time when you're like. If you eat the mushroom, it starts killing your DNA. But you you seem totally you seem fine. normal. You're like a dead man walking. That's why they say don't eat mushrooms. Don't eat those mushrooms in general, or just those mushrooms. Those uh, whatever ones those are called. This falling with helium. He had a, a hypothetical question about if you were to j be dropped from a plane and you had a huge balloon in a helium tank, how big would the balloon have to be, and how much helium would you have to have, and how no no. How high would you have to be dropped from before you would be able to use the compressed helium to fill up the balloon to stop you from falling? And that was possible. It was possible. <laughs> so I'm doing that next weekend. All right. Um, he talked about the physics of the force and how much power Yoda demonstrated when levitating uh, Luke's uh, X-wing out of the swamp. Uh, again, I don't remember. It was it was about as much as the emperor exerts from his lightning fingers. They were pretty much equal. That's pretty hypothetical. When you get into <laughs> talking about the Force and Star Wars, where there's whole like Star Wars Wikipedia is Wikip 
whatever the Wikipedia, where like people have taught, you know, they've talked about the uh, the gravitational pull on every planet, and all this data exists. And I, right. so I he's think that's awesome. That. So anyway, as you can see, <laughs> is there any more? Oh, there's plenty more. He also did a thing him. where he would talk about the uh, weird and worrying questions from the internet, like questions that he wasn't actually going to uh, dignify yeah. with an answer. And uh, there's some pretty messed up people out there. <laughs> um, We've established that though. The glass half empty one, like if a if a if a is the glass half empty or half full, and if it's literally half empty, what would happen? If you like, took totally the, lost if, me on that one. If the you, vacuum, if you instead of there being air on one side and water on the other side, if there was a literal vacuum on the air side, what would happen? And if like if it was on top or bottom, I mean, for the interesting thing is half of the oh. The, the, one of my favorite ones was what would happen if you had a scaled periodic table of elements all together at the same time. Oh, you like that one? Yeah. Yeah, I was like, I'm not loving this one. So, because so many of the answers to these questions were, if okay, the answer to this is the world would end if you were to do this, yeah. essentially. But if, and I think he, he said there was a one inch cube of each element or something like that, which is way more than there's even it exists of some of the elements, but. Hmm. If you created the, a periodic table of the elements and it was just sat there and all these things were in play together at the same time, so many crazy things would happen because of these the way that they would react. They would interact with each other. And he, and he went with like, this one's next to this one so it would react in this way, then it would cause this reaction and it was cataclysmic. Um, last one I'll mention, lost immortals, when it's just there's two people on the face of the earth <laughs> yeah. and then they've been like, they're trying to, f how long would it take them to find each other? And he came up with a system of what he thought would be the best way to do it. It was walking in ever increasing circles, right? And you, he modeled it after how ants walk around because ants will follow each other and you're marking a trail and then when you find a trail that the, and the, if the other person's marking a trail and you find it, you start speeding up so you could, catch them and if you're making a new trail, you go, you go slow. Slowly. And so you're making a record of where you are. So you can, again, you can't, I can't explain it, but it's, so if I'm, if I'm the, one of the last two people on earth and I got to find the other person, I'm just gonna be really angry that I wasn't totally paying attention. Well, and they also have to be employing the same system for right. it to work. Right, so they have so to if, read this So if book. we ever get the, the last two people on Earth, we need to go back and listen to this chapter again so we can know exactly what the system is gonna be so we can find each other. Or you know what? Or let's just decide we, right now. Well, let's just, I mean, we spend enough time together in the normal life, I think we should just stay solo. I mean, is it that big of a deal? I mean, we, you know, and when is that gonna be? We're gonna be really old. We should just sit there and just die. We shouldn't just walk around looking for each other. Well, what are we gonna if, do, make a show for nobody? If you change, Companionship, dude. If you change your mind, I'll be Compa at, companionship, dude. I'll be at that huge tree. You know what I'm talking the about. The huge tree. Yeah, I do. Don't say anything else because yeah, other exactly people will show up. At. We'd like to announce our next big project called Companionship, dude.